There are two types of influenza that cause significant human disease, A and B. And we're going to talk about how they infect cells and replicate. And we're going to go into some detail because it'll help you understand treatment and vaccines for the flu down the line. So to start, you're going to need to know three things about influenza. First of all, its genome is single-stranded negative RNA. Second of all, its genome is segmented. So there are actually eight strands of negative RNA. And finally, it's enveloped with two key proteins in the envelope, hemagglutinin and neuraminidase. So let's talk about how infection works. So starting from the beginning, you get exposed to the virus via respiratory droplets. And the virus then infects epithelial cells in the upper respiratory tract. And how does it infect them? Well, hemagglutinin binds to sialic acid on our respiratory epithelial cells. And what is this sialic acid? Well, we're not going to talk about its function, but you should know that it's a molecule that's expressed on almost all human cells. And that actually includes red blood cells, which is where the name hemagglutinin comes from. Hemagglutinin makes heme, referring to blood, a glutinate or stick together. So once the virus binds sialic acid, it's then taken up into the cell by receptor-mediated endocytosis, which puts it into an endosome. And then H plus ions enter the endosome, and that ultimately causes the viral envelope to fuse with the endosome membrane and release its contents into the cytoplasm. And influenza A actually has an M2 ion channel that allows H plus ions to enter the virus itself and facilitates this whole fusion process. And I'm mentioning this M2 protein because there's a drug that targets it that we're going to talk about. So next, the genetic material goes to the nucleus. And remember, it's a negative stranded RNA, and you can't do much with that. You need the positive strand to make proteins. But there's no human enzyme that can create a positive strand RNA from a negative strand RNA. So the virus actually brings in its own RNA-dependent RNA polymerase in every viral particle that also travels to the nucleus with the genetic material and will convert this negative RNA to positive RNA. So once the virus has made positive stranded RNA, those are translated into proteins, and those proteins get the whole viral machinery going. They replicate influenza's genome and create more positive stranded RNA to make necessary proteins. And new virions are eventually assembled from the negative stranded RNA and proteins, and they bud off the cell membrane where hemagglutinin and neuraminidase were embedded. But the problem is that now hemagglutinin is still going to bind sialic acid again, and that would actually prevent the virus from going free. And that's where neuraminidase comes in. So it turns out sialic acid is actually also called N-acetylneuraminic acid. And you don't need to remember that name, but it's a hint that neuraminidase actually serves to chop sialic acid off from whatever protein it's attached to. And that allows the virus to go free and infect a new cell. And the whole process, this whole replicative process, takes about eight hours and causes the cell to die. 